Welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the top five dumbest legal decisions made in federal court. You won't believe some of these. I mean, we're talking decisions so mind-bogglingly absurd, so bafflingly illogical, that you'll wonder if the judges were wearing blindfolds and noise-cancelling headphones, while simultaneously playing hopscotch in a wind tunnel. We're talking about rulings that make you question the very fabric of our legal system. Decisions that make you want to stand up and shout, did they even read the case? Don't worry, you're not alone. We're here to break down these legal head scratches and try to make sense of the seemingly senseless. So strap yourselves in because we're about to embark on a wild ride through the wacky world of judicial mishaps. Get ready to have your faith in humanity and the American justice system thoroughly shaken. Kicking off our list at number five, we have a real humdinger of a case. This one involves a copyright dispute that's so absurd it would make even Kafka scratch his head. Picture this, a photographer snaps a picture of a sculpture. Pretty standard stuff, right? Well, hold on to your monocles, folks, because in this case, the court ruled that the photographer didn't actually own the copyright to the photo. Why, you might ask? Your voice reaching a fever pitch of incredulity. Well, because the sculpture itself was copyrighted and the court decided that taking a picture of it somehow violated that copyright. It's like saying you can't take a picture of the Eiffel Tower without permission from the Eiffel Tower itself. A legal expert, this decision sent shockwaves through the legal and artistic communities and for good reason. It set a dangerous precedent suggesting that anyone could potentially claim copyright infringement simply by having their copyrighted work appear in the background of someone else's photo. Critic. Imagine the chaos. Tourists being sued by architects, food bloggers being taken to court by cookbook authors. The possibilities were as endless as they were ridiculous. Public opinion. Thankfully, this decision was eventually overturned on appeal, but not before it had caused its fair share of confusion and consternation. It serves as a stark reminder that even the most seemingly straightforward legal concepts can be twisted and contorted in ways that defy logic and common sense. But hey, at least it gave us a good laugh, right? I mean, who needs a functioning copyright system when you can have judges playing legal twister with our understanding of intellectual property? This, my friends, is why we can't have nice things. Coming in at number four, we have a case that proves that truth is truly stranger than fiction. This one involves a contract dispute so ludicrous it would make even the most jaded lawyer raise an eyebrow. We're talking about a contract that's so one-sided, so egregiously unfair, that it would make a loan shark blush. Imagine this, a small business owner, desperate for a loan, agrees to a contract with a lender. Seems pretty standard so far, right? But here's the catch. The contract stipulates that the business owner must pay back the loan in full, wait for it, within 24 hours. You heard me right, 24 hours, critic. Now, I'm no financial expert, but even I know that's a time frame better suited to ordering takeout than securing a business loan. It's like asking a caterpillar to climb Mount Everest in an afternoon, legal expert. And if that wasn't ludicrous enough, the contract also included a clause stating that if the business owner failed to repay the loan within the allotted 24 hours, they would forfeit their entire business to the lender. Public opinion. Shockingly, a federal court actually upheld this contract, arguing that both parties had agreed to the terms, however ridiculous they may seem. This decision left legal experts scratching their heads and wondering if the judges had perhaps missed a few days of contract law class. The case eventually made its way to a higher court where the judges, thankfully possessing a modicum of common sense, overturned the previous ruling, deeming the contract unconscionable and against public policy. But the fact that this case even made it to federal court in the first place is a testament to the fact that in the legal world, sometimes the line between reality and satire becomes incredibly blurry. Buckle up, folks, because our number three entry is a real doozy. This case involves a trademark dispute that's so utterly bizarre, it would make even Alice in Wonderland feel right at home. We're talking about a legal battle over, wait for it, a meerkat. Yes, you heard that right, a meerkat. Those adorable little creatures that stand on their hind legs and look out for predators. Yeah, those meerkats. 
It all started when a photographer snapped some stunning photos of these charismatic critters in their natural habitat. The photographer, being a savvy business person, decided to copyright these photos, which, fair enough, they took the pictures. However, things took a turn for the strange when the photographer attempted to sue a greeting card company for using similar looking meerkats in their designs. Now, I'm no legal expert, but I'm pretty sure you can't copyright an entire species. I mean, where do you even draw the line? Can you copyright a tree, a cloud, the concept of oxygen? Apparently, the photographer in this case seemed to think so, because they argued that the greeting card company's meerkats were too similar to their own copyrighted meerkats and therefore constituted copyright infringement. The case dragged on for months, costing both parties a small fortune in legal fees. Finally, a federal judge, clearly as baffled by the whole thing as we are, threw the case out, ruling that the photographer couldn't possibly copyright the likeness of a meerkat. The judge reportedly said, meerkats are animals, not intellectual property. A statement so blindingly obvious, it's a wonder it needed to be said in a court of law. This case serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of copyright overreach and the importance of having a firm grasp on reality when navigating the legal system. And also maybe, just maybe, not suing people over meerkats. Hold on to your hats, folks, because our number two entry is a real humdinger. This one involves a lawsuit so utterly absurd, so mind-bogglingly ridiculous, that it'll make you question the very fabric of human existence. We're talking about a lawsuit filed because, wait for it, someone's feelings were hurt. Yes, you heard that right. Hurt feelings. Apparently in this day and age, emotional distress is grounds for a federal case. Who knew? It all started when a woman claimed that a certain brand of potato chips was causing her emotional distress. Why? Because according to her, the chips were too addictive. I know what you're thinking. This has to be a joke, right? But I assure you, this is a real lawsuit that actually happened. The woman claimed that the chip's addictive nature had caused her to gain weight and suffer from various health problems. She argued that the chip company was negligent in not warning consumers about the addictive potential of their product. Now, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure potato chips are not inherently addictive in the same way that, say, nicotine or caffeine are. I mean, have you ever met someone who couldn't go a day without their Pringles fix? who experienced crippling withdrawals at the mere thought of a Ruffles-free existence. The judge in this case, to their credit, seemed equally skeptical. They ultimately dismissed the lawsuit, ruling that the woman had failed to prove that the chip company was liable for her alleged emotional distress. This case is a perfect example of what happens when the legal system collides headfirst with the absurdity of modern life. It's a cautionary tale about the dangers of frivolous lawsuits and the importance of personal responsibility. And also, maybe, just maybe not suing a potato chip company because you ate too many chips. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the number one dumbest federal court decision ever. This case is so unbelievably absurd, so mind-numbingly ludicrous, that it makes the previous four look like models of judicial wisdom. We're talking about a case that involves a will, a dog, and a whole lot of head scratching. It all started when a wealthy businessman passed away leaving behind a sizable fortune. Now, you might think that his heirs would be his children, or perhaps his siblings, or maybe even a long-lost love, but you would be wrong, because this businessman, in his infinite wisdom, decided to leave his entire fortune to his dog. Yes, you heard that right, his dog. Now, I love dogs as much as the next person. Millions of dollars seems a bit excessive, don't you think? In what's a dog going to do with all that money? Buy a solid gold fire hydrant. Invest in a pile of squeaky toys. Apparently the businessman's family thought so too, because they challenged the will in court, arguing that it was clearly the product of an unsound mind. And honestly, who could blame them? But here's where things get really crazy. The court, in its infinite wisdom, actually upheld the will ruling that the businessman was of sound mind when he made it, and that he was therefore free to leave his money to whomever he pleased, even if that whomever happened to be a canine. The family was understandably outraged, but there was nothing they could do. The dog, now a multimillionaire, continued to live a life of doggy luxury, 
while the businessman's family was left to ponder the vagaries of fate and the questionable sanity of their late relative. This case, my friends, is a shining example of why you should always, always, always have a lawyer look over your will before you shuffle off this mortal coil. Unless, of course, you want your beloved pet to inherit your entire estate, in which case more power to you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, follow, like, comment and share. And be sure to let us know in the comments below which of these legal head scratches you found the most absurd. We'll be back next week with more wild and wacky stories from the world of law, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Until then, stay safe, stay informed, and try not to accidentally copyright a squirrel. See you next time.